The film opens with a character named Needy, an inmate in a prison. She gets in trouble with the guard for attacking them out of nowhere and is thrown into solitary confinement. Needy then begins narrating how she ended up in this situation, taking us back to her past. The story begins in high school, where Needy is a nerdy and awkward student who is best friends with Jennifer, an incredibly beautiful and popular classmate. Despite the differences, everyone, including Needy's boyfriend Chip, questioning their friendship, the two have been inseparable since childhood. They live in a small town called Devon's Kettle, named after an ominous waterfall with a swirling hole that no one knows where it leads. Two strange scientists have been investigating the mysterious waterfall in Devil's Kettle for years, but have yet to figure out where the swirling hole leads. One day, Jennifer approaches Needy and asks her to accompany her to see a live performance by an indie band called Low Shoulder. Jennifer mentions that she finds the lead vocalist attractive and might make a move on him that evening. Not wanting her best friend to go alone, Needy cancels her plans to spend some time with her boyfriend Chip and agrees to go to the concert with Jennifer. Later that night, Chip accompanies Needy as she waits for Jennifer to pick her up. During this time, it's revealed that Needy and Jennifer share some sort of psychic connection as Needy can sense when Jennifer arrives at her house. Chip, who witnesses this, finds it very strange. He then goes downstairs and watches Jennifer and Needy interact. It's clear from his reaction that he dislikes Jennifer due to how crassly she treats Needy. Not long after, Jennifer and Needy arrive at the pub where the band Low Shoulder is about to perform. They pass by their classmate Craig, who like everyone else in town, adores Jennifer. They also encounter Emma, a foreign exchange student from India who attends their school. Next, Officer Roman, who casually sleeps with Jennifer from time to time, approaches them and tries to hit on her. However, Jennifer ditches him for Low Shoulder's lead singer Nikolai, immediately walking up to him with Needy by her side. Jennifer shyly introduces herself to Nikolai and offers to get him a drink. As Jennifer heads to the bar, Needy overhears Nikolai creepily conversing with his bandmate about how Jennifer must be a virgin. Realizing Nikolai might be a predator, Needy confronts him and tells him to stay away from Jennifer. She then tries to warn Jennifer about Nikolai, but Jennifer brushes it off, casually remarking that she is far from being a virgin. The two stop conversing when the band begins to perform, and then, inexplicably, building catches on fire in the middle of the performance. Oddly enough, the band seems unfazed, even as people panic and try to escape, getting trampled or burned to death in the process. Needy guides a shaken Jennifer out of the building through a window in the restroom and tries to calm her down. Suddenly, Nikolai appears and forces Jennifer to gulp down some whisk. He then whisks the bewildered Jennifer away, while Needy pleads with her to stay. Jennifer naively assures Needy that she'll be okay. Panicked, Needy calls her boyfriend Chip. When she returns home that evening and fills him in on the horrifying event she witnessed, including people being burned alive and Jennifer getting into a van with strangers, Chip, who dislikes Jennifer, tells Needy not to worry about her. Later, Needy is startled by the doorbell ringing. She goes downstairs to answer it but finds no one outside. Just as she's about to head back upstairs, she hears rustling noises coming from the kitchen. Investigating, she moves to turn off a dripping sink, only to find Jennifer standing in front of her. Covered in blood with a lewd smile on her face, Jennifer ransacks the fridge attempting to eat but ends up vomiting a tar-like black goo. Terrified, Needy rushes to the foyer to call for help, but Jennifer suddenly pins her to the wall. Jennifer begins caressing Needy, moving to bite her neck and leaving a mark before exiting the house as police sirens wail in the background. The next day, the school buzzes with news about the town's pub burning down with only a few survivors. Needy, deep in thought about the previous night, remains troubled. Jennifer approaches Needy looking completely normal and disturbingly casual about the deaths of their acquaintances in the fire. Jennifer even acts as if she doesn't remember storming into Needy's house and vomiting all over the kitchen floor. After class, Needy tries to tell her boyfriend Chip about Jennifer's sinister behavior, but he dismisses her concerns and questions her sanity. Meanwhile, Jennifer approaches Jonas, Craig's best friend who is grieving Craig's death in the fire. Jennifer convinces Jonas that Craig mentioned they would look good together and lures him to the woods. They start making out, but oddly enough, animals in the woods begin to gather around them, watching intently. Jonas pauses, taking in the creepy sight in wonder, but Jennifer remains unfazed and simply tells him that the animals are waiting for something. And then this happens. Jennifer devilishly devours his flesh while the teacher can hear Jonas' screams helplessly. Later that day, Needy is cooking while listening to the radio when she hears that the band she and Jennifer watched that night, Low Shoulder, 
has gained a massive amount of followers following the incident and are even considered as national heroes. In the meantime, the local media praises low shoulder for allegedly saving people from the burning building. Meanwhile, Aditya discovers Jonas's disfigured body in the forest. The police quickly gather at the scene, while Jennifer can be seen swimming uncovered in a nearby lake, looking completely relaxed and content. That night, Jennifer calls Needy to inform her that she feels amazing and tells Needy to stop grieving for the people who died in the fire. As people die all the time, Needy eventually has to hang up because the boyfriend Chip is calling. During the call, Chip informs her that Jonas, who happens to be his neighbor, is dead. Hearing this, Needy rushes to see Chip and comforts him. Chip explains that Jonas's body was found completely ripped apart in the woods. In the following days, the entire town grieves the many lives lost in such a short time, except for Jennifer, who seems to be thriving more than ever. The news about the recent incidents in the town makes it to national headlines, and the band Low Shoulder gains more recognition and fame. Despite this, the townsfolk try to move on with their lives. A month later, Jennifer appears pale and unwell during class. After class, a student named Colin timidly asks Jennifer out, but she initially berates him. Needy, however, interjects, saying she thinks Colin is cool and kind, prompting Jennifer to change her mind and invite him over that evening. Needy's boyfriend Chip then shows up, and Needy protectively kisses him, fearing Jennifer might flirt with him. That night, Needy and Chip decide to have an intimate moment for the first time. Meanwhile, Colin drives to the address Jennifer texted him, only to find an empty house. Curious, he climbs in and finds Jennifer on the second floor, creepily staring at him. Colin realizes that this isn't Jennifer's actual house. Jennifer begins to seduce him, but when Colin gets scared, she twists his arm, injuring him just as she did to Jonas. Jennifer mauls Colin and eats his flesh. Meanwhile, Needy experiences a strange vision of the ceiling bleeding zombie like Jonas and Jennifer standing on the other side of the room. Freaked out, Needy gets dressed and drives away from Chip's house. On the way, she sees Jennifer and swerves her car to avoid her. She stops for a moment, but a wild-looking Jennifer lands on the windshield, terrifying Needy and causing her to drive off in a panic. When Needy gets home, she starts crying, incredibly scared and questioning her sanity. Once she calms down, she returns to her bedroom to sleep, finds Jennifer there looking calm and cheerful. Jennifer tenderly kisses Needy and they make out for a while until Needy pulls away and demands an explanation. Jennifer casually recounts what happened the night she climbed into Low Shoulder's van. Realizing that they were driving into the woods, Jennifer started to get scared, fearing they might assault her. She tried to convince the band that she was a virgin and knew nothing about sex. The van stopped by the infamous waterfall and the bandmates dragged her out and tied her up. They prepared to perform a satanic ritual to gain fame. Nikolai, the lead singer, recited a satanic mantra before stabbing her in the chest with a sharp blade, killing her. Nikolai then disposed of the blade by throwing it into the swirling hole to get rid of the evidence. Jennifer continues to tell Needy that she doesn't remember much of what happened afterwards, except that she reawakened and found herself walking toward Needy's home. She also felt a craving for human flesh, but couldn't bring herself to kill Needy because she loves her, so she decided to run away. During that night, Jennifer came across Emma, the foreign exchange student who survived the fire, and ended up killing and eating him instead. She explains that when she's full, she's invincible, and to prove it, she cuts herself and shows Needy how the wound instantly heals. However, she gets very weak when she's hungry. Overwhelmed by this information, Needy tells Jennifer to leave, and Jennifer reluctantly exits to the window. The next day, Needy attends Colin's funeral and silently realizes that she saw Jennifer covered in blood the previous night because she had just killed Colin. Later, Needy heads to the library and spends the following days researching demons and the occult, trying to understand what Jennifer has become. She eventually presents her findings to her boyfriend Chip, explaining that according to the books, one can perform a ritual to achieve fame by sacrificing a virgin. However, if the sacrifice is not a virgin, the performer still gets fame, but the sacrifice comes back to life with a demon soul trapped inside her. Jennifer, now possessed, must consume human flesh to stay alive. Chip finds this explanation insane and doesn't believe Needy. The school dance is approaching and Needy tries to convince Chip not to go for safety reasons, but he insists. Needy reluctantly decides to attend as well. On the day of the dance, Chip's mother gives him pepper spray for protection. Jennifer, looking pale and starving, sets her sights on Chip. Needy arrives at the dance first and waits for Chip, while Chip walks alone to the event. Jennifer intercepts him and starts spouting lies about how Needy cheated on him with Colin, convincing Chip to come with her to get back at Needy. At the school dance, Low Shoulder makes an appearance, and Needy grimaces as the band begins to perform. 
Meanwhile, Jennifer and Chip are making out by a tree. Needy, with her random psychic skills, senses something is wrong and dashes outside, instinctively knowing where to go. Jennifer leads Chip into an abandoned room, and Needy rushes to the location with her psychic GPS. Jennifer tries to kiss Chip again, but he hesitates, saying he loves Needy too much to cheat on her. Enraged, Jennifer throws Chip into the pool and attacks him. Just in time, Needy arrives and sees her boyfriend in trouble. She jumps into the pool and pulls Jennifer away. Chip then hands her the pepper spray and Needy uses it against Jennifer. Furious, Jennifer vomits black goo and begins to hover about the water. Needy helps Chip out of the pool and confronts Jennifer, demanding to know why she targeted Chip specifically. Jennifer deflects the question and refuses to give a clear answer. As Jennifer advances menacingly, Chip stabs her in the gut with the metal bar before collapsing. Jennifer, after pulling out the metal bar, gives Needy a sorrowful look and walks away. Needy kneels next to Chip and they confess their love for each other as he bleeds to death. Jennifer returns looking pale and weak. Needy, devastated, breaks through a window and continues to pursue Jennifer for killing Chip. Jennifer bites Needy on the throat before letting go. Needy then pulls out a box cutter and uses her newfound demon powers to cut an X mark above her abdomen. Jennifer hovers about the bed as they continue to fight. Needy, taking advantage of Jennifer's distraction, rips the friendship necklace off her neck and stabs her in the heart, both literally and metaphorically. This final act of violence lands Needy in prison, now confined to solitary confinement. Her demon powers acquired from Jennifer's bite allow her to levitate and break out of prison. She finds a knife Nikolai used to kill Jennifer and takes it with her. Needy then hitches a ride with a stranger to attend Low Shoulders' concert. After the concert, it's revealed that the entire band has been murdered, implicating Needy in the killings. The film concludes with a security footage shot of Needy walking out of a hotel room, hinting at a continuing rampage.